guys so this video is going to be one of the most important videos if you're doing any kind of email marketing and what we're talking about today is segmentation now segmentation is really really important and it's one of the biggest areas that we see brands really kind of miss out on or mess up on in general and what it ends up leading to is people who aren't interested in receiving your content receive your content uh, you end up getting higher on subscribe rates you end up getting higher marked as spam rates and ultimately esps so email service providers end up looking at you and being like hmm you know what probably shouldn't be going to the inbox right so it's really really important to look at segmentation that you have currently with your campaigns how you're segmenting out flows as well and in this video we're going to walk through step by step exactly how we do that with our clients the first thing we're going to run through is just a segmentation overview the second is how to actually segment and then the third piece is key segments that you're going to want to use for your store as well so i'm going to share my screen and we'll dive right in Okay, so what is a segment? A segment is a group of contacts with a certain set of conditions. Segments are dynamic, meaning that they're gonna shrink and grow depending on how many people and if those people meet certain conditions or criteria, whereas lists are static, meaning they grow as people subscribe or unsubscribe. The key to effective marketing is getting the right message in front of the right people at the right time. This is why segmentation is so important because you can have the right message in front of the wrong people or sent at the wrong time and that marketing will fail. So segmentation, like I said, is absolutely crucial here. The quickest way to end up in the spam folder is by batching and blasting every single person on your list. General rules of thumb here that you want to stick to is the higher the frequency you send, the more strict you want to be with who you're sending to. I.e. if you're sending three times a week, you could be doing a 60, 90 or 120 day engaged audience. If you're sending four times a week, you should be doing less than that, right? Or if you're doing two times a month, you could be doing a 90 day engaged. But if you're doing four times a week, you should be doing significantly less than that or just looking at different segments and being more specific about who you're actually sending to now high segmentation is what we would consider as about less than 20 percent of your list mid segmentation is about 20 to 90 percent of your list low or no segmentation is effectively just like the entire list or like 90 plus percent of your list now just before we dive deeper into the segmentation piece this is kind of a helpful chart that we use to just consider where people might be at in in their buying journey and really like how frequently we should be sending emails to those specific people. Highly engaged people, typically we're gonna get a 20% plus open rate there might be 30,000 profiles in that highly engaged audience. The email frequency, they're gonna get pretty much all the emails we're sending. So for example here, if we're sending 10 emails total per month, they would get 10 times a month. The medium to high engaged would kind of be the 15 to 20% open rate. So they're still opening a fair amount. It's probably about 50,000 profiles and they get about 75% of the monthly email. So about, you know, seven out of those 10. The low to high engaged people, this is including everyone from like low, medium to high. These open rates are gonna fall a little bit so you might be shooting for like 10 15 percent typically we're going to be shooting for a little bit higher than that but profiles would be 75,000 out of 100,000 and then they'd receive about 50 percent of your monthly emails so again if you're sending 10 you'd, they'd receive five and finally you get the churn risk and basically everyone else on your list you have the full 100,000 profiles that you're sending to open rates are not going to be anywhere near as high and typically you don't want to send these people every single email you're sending you might send them an email every you know it could be a couple times Times a year with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that's the main time really. And like maybe the odd flash sale that we're gonna be wanting to send to the entire list. Now you might wanna send to people a little bit more frequently than that if they're not quite completely unengaged, but this is just kind of like a rough outline that we look at. Some additional notes to look at here. If you haven't checked out the list cleaning video, please check that out. Cause it's gonna be very, very important when we're talking about segmentation as well. It's absolutely crucial that you understand the importance of list cleaning and what goes into list cleaning on a monthly or quarterly quarterly or you know biannual basis also just keep in mind uh, there's another video as well on Apple's iOS 15 MPP open so that's another thing to check out as well now what are some of the conditions that you can use for segmentation I wrote out an entire list here but what I'm going to do is 
I'm just going to walk through in Klaviyo itself and just show you exactly how you can select those uh, conditions and the conditions that you can use as well. So let me just share my screen here. Okay, so when we're in this page, and if you don't know how to get to this page, you go to list and segments on the left hand side, and then you would just name the segment, uh, we'll just call this test here. And then what you want to do is select the condition. So the conditions you can use is what someone has or has not done properties about someone, if someone is or is not within the EU, someone's proximity to a location, if someone is or is not in a list, and if someone can or cannot receive marketing. Now, this is a piece that they recently changed. Um, so you can actually see here, they recently changed is or is not suppressed. So if you see that anywhere is or is not suppressed, that is effectively what this has been changed to. And then finally, predictive analytics about someone. Now, this is gonna be restricted to people who effectively they're getting more than 500 purchases. There's a lot of data that Klaviyo can use and leverage to build those predictive analytics analytics about someone. So diving in here a little bit further. So what someone has or hasn't done effectively, what you're going to do here is then select a metric or something that someone has or hasn't done, right? So you could see like bounced email, very frequently we used clicked email or opened email, but you can use so many different kind of filters here. I won't rattle them all off because you can read, right? But um, you can see like there's so many different filters that we can use. You could say like fulfilled order. Again, like we use that quite frequently. We use placed order quite frequently, refunded order. And then once you've selected that, so let's say we, we decide, okay, you know what? We want to filter based off of opened email. Then you can filter based off of a time. So at least once would mean someone has done whatever action this is at least once zero times zero times equals this would mean like you only want to hit people who have opened an email once that would be you know equals one doesn't equal so this would mean anything that doesn't equal for example zero is at least is greater than right so this uh, those would both be like okay it's someone has opened the email at least twice or it's greater someone has opened the email is greater than three times is less than same deal there and then is at most again you're looking at a different filter here where it's like okay Okay, at most they've they've opened the email twice. Now, once you select this, this will actually change here because if you want to say like is greater than, it's going to enter a number there. Is at least once, right? Is not going to give you an opportunity to add a number there. So I'm going to say is at least and then I'm going to say four times over all time. And then you can actually select over all time in the last, which would be in the last 90 days type of thing. So you can select this and say like the last 30 days, uh, the next piece would be between. So it would be like between 30 and, you know, let's say 90 days you can also select before, right? So this is before a certain date after a certain date and then between certain dates. So that's kind of what you can select in terms of what someone has and hasn't done. You can also add further filters here and the further filters you can add are basically like, okay, they've a frequent one that we'll use is maybe they have received a campaign name or they, for example, here, maybe they opened a certain campaign, right? So we could say has opened, I'm going to make something at least once overall time. So I'm going to say has opened an email at least once overall time where the campaign name equals, and then you would just select the campaign name here. So a lot of filtration uh, that you can do here, again, each different setting here that you're selecting will give you different options as well, right? Different options more specifically here. Now, the next piece would be properties about someone. So this is more so just like if you have standard properties, or if you've added additional properties, like one of the properties you're going to want to add is unsubscribe, for example, or unengaged, for example, right? So you could say unengaged is true. And there's a lot of other properties here as well, right? Again, I'm not going to read all of these out for you, but you could say like first name is or last active or phone number or state or region. There's a lot of different filtrations that you can use here as well. Beyond that, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Just if someone is or is not within the EU, uh, someone's proximity to a location. This is um, obviously it requires to have their address initially. So if they are within X amount of miles or kilometers, if you're in Canada, right, of X postal code in X country. Also pretty beneficial, especially if you have brick and mortar locations and you just want to send to certain people in certain locations who purchased from you, if you haven't previously segmented that. If someone is or is not in a list, right, you then go ahead and choose this list. You can also segment a little bit further based off of the date added. You can also say is not in this list, right? If someone can or cannot receive marketing. So this is going to be very important. You're going to want to pretty much include this on every segment. If someone can or cannot receive marketing, the person can receive email marketing. If they cannot receive email marketing, that means they're suppressed. 
essentially. So like that, those people should already be suppressed. So you don't really need to include them again in the exclusions. Finally, predictive analytics. This is where you can just choose additional predictive analytics here. There's a whole section and a whole video on predictive analytics because it's a beast, but that's another way that you can kind of go ahead and segment out there. So that's essentially some of the conditions you can use for segmentation, the conditions based off of a specific date. And the next big thing is using the and and or connector. So basically what this means is it can be used to make segments more exclusive, right? So a customer must meet all of the segment conditions. So if I were to go in here and say, you know, someone has, I'm gonna go back to this, someone has opened an email at least once over all time, and they also have clicked an email at least once over all time. What that's saying now is that they must have done both. So it's saying a customer must meet all of your segment conditions, right? Using the or connector can make the segment more inclusive. Meaning like if I went back in here and I was like, instead of doing and I said or, and then I did the exact same thing. I don't need to necessarily build it out for you guys, but I did the exact same thing here. That would make it more inclusive. So it could be like, oh, if someone opened an email or if they clicked an email. Now that might, that might be a little bit of a ridiculous statement, but nonetheless, that would make it a little bit more inclusive, right? You could say opened an email or a purchased, right? Hey, I'll give you, I'll, I'll build out this example for you. So if you said open email and ordered, placed order at least once, that would mean someone would have to open the email and also place the order. If you said here though, that what someone has done and then you went placed order at least once over all time, that could mean they opened an email or they placed an order. That's not, you know, you're not making it exclusive. So you're making it a little bit more lax and a little bit more open in terms of what actually is included there. Be careful with this, especially with negative conditions, because if we want to create a segment of people who do not live in Canada or the US or if, and if we use or here, the people will only need to meet one of these conditions, right? So the segment will not work because each condition is allowing the other condition to exist with the use of or. So hopefully that makes sense. This is a really important video and this is kind of like the initial overview of segmentation. In the next video, we're gonna run through exactly how to segment and what we're looking for when we're segmenting. So how do you segment? Effectively, what you wanna do is consider people's intent. So what we do is we look at effectively like three different things with people's level of intent. So what we do is we consider their purchase engagement, which is the highest intent, the email engagement, which is kind of mid intent, and then their website engagement, which is lowest intent. Now within these, what we also do is take into account RFV. RFV is recency, frequency, and value. So recency would be like, hey, has someone purchased in the last day or in the last year? Frequency would be, hey, has someone purchased once or 17 times? Value would be, has someone spent $50 or $500, right? It's very important to look at this when we're going ahead and creating segments because we want to understand like, hey, how engaged are these people? How recently did people purchase? How frequently did people purchase? How valuable are these people so that we can address people based off of uh, their current level of intent? Now, iOS 15 changed the way that we receive data. So some of the open rate data may be a little bit funky. So open rates will look a little bit inflated here. If campaign analytics show a large number of iOS openers, we should look at how many users are impacted and then create a segment accordingly. So there's another section and another video on the Apple iOS 15 MPP opens. Check that out if you haven't already. The definitions of recency, frequency, and monetary value should really be customized based off of your business. I'm not giving you exact numbers here because what is recent for you for your business is different than what's recent for someone else. And I'll give you an example here. If you sell mattresses, the frequency of purchases is gonna be a heck of a lot lower than if you sell supplements, but the value is gonna be a heck of a lot higher, right? So it's really important to consider based off of your business, and there's another video on exactly how to dive in and understand a little bit more about the average time between purchases, the average time between orders for consumers. That's really important to understand. And it's also really important to understand like, hey, how many times have these people purchased, right? If people are buying a mattress, they're probably not coming back three or four times unless they've got like, three or four different like bedrooms and things like that. And they're buying it for each one of their bedrooms out all at the same time, pretty unlikely versus a supplement where it's like, Hey, you know what? Like people are probably buying that monthly or every 45 days or maybe every 60 days. So really, really important to consider that some rough guidelines 
for you to consider. Again, it's really important that you just build this out specific to your business, but some very rough guidelines here you can consider are number one, engagement recently would be three months and frequency would be three times or more. And then from a purchase perspective, recent would be within four months, not recent would be four to 13 months ago and frequent would be three times. And then high monetary value. This is when you're looking at VIPs and we'll get into that in the next segmentation video. This is when we're looking at high monetary values. So two to three times your average order value, just over your average order value. Typically, we're going to go want to go for like two to three times for the odd store. We might do just above the average order value. Again, depends what you're selling. So again, just to reiterate here, the difference between segments and lists. Lists are static and they're from CSV files or from people who are already in Klaviyo. Segments are dynamic and based off of people's behaviors or properties. And effectively, like all of these things are how we can go about building out segments. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. Like I said, this is one of the most important videos you're gonna watch. This was the second video in the segmentation series. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. The next one is gonna be the exact segments that you wanna build out. Uh, and if you haven't watched the first video yet, go ahead and watch that and then watch this one as well. So the main segments that we're looking at, and again, don't get overwhelmed by this because uh, I'll give you the kind of core four right below this. So the main segments we're going to look at are a 30 to 60 day highly engaged lead, a 30, 60 or 90 day engaged lead VIPs, 30 to 60 day brand enthusiasts, brand enthusiasts, 90 day engaged purchasers, all past purchasers, waiting for wow, cross sell segments, win back, sunset or unengaged segment, customer lifetime value, gender and geography. So I know that probably sounds overwhelming and I don't want it to. So let's dive into the four core segments that you're probably gonna wanna use if you're not doing a lot of segmentation. So the first one you're gonna wanna use is the 90 day engaged. The second one would be VIPs. The third would be winbacks. And then the fourth would be sunset. So let's dive in. I'm gonna go through all of the segments that I just listed above and I'm gonna run through exactly how to create those as well. So 30 to 60 day highly engaged leads. Again, we're gonna filter this based off of RFV, recency, frequency, and value. If you haven't watched the second video in the segmentation series yet, go ahead, watch that video. It's super important. You need to make sure you understand RFB before we even get started here. With this segment, what we're going to look at is a high recency, a low to mid frequency, and then the value doesn't actually exist yet. So how we differentiate purchaser and a non-purchaser is we look at lead and call a lead a non-purchaser. If we are looking at a segment such as all past purchasers, we're going to call it purchasers. If we're going to call it an engaged lead, those are people who are not yet purchasers, right? They're just leads for the business or potential purchasers, right? Now, our goal here is to bring them over the edge and make their first purchase by reminding them what they missed out on, your brand value, and potentially incentivizing them to purchase. These people are gonna be people who are in the newsletter list. Uh, the filters we're gonna use are, has opened email at least two to three times in the last 30 to 60 days, or has clicked an email at least two to three times in the last 30 to 60 days, and has placed an order zero times overall time, and if someone can receive email marks. So if we scroll down here, this is exactly how how it looks like built out in Klaviyo. So next piece here, what content should we be sending to these people? Well, we're gonna be sending new products, collection launches, we're sending giveaways, holiday offers, promos and other offers, social proof, current events, gifting, educational content and team focused content. These people are pretty engaged, like they're quite engaged. They've opened a number of emails. What we wanna do is get them re-engaged and ultimately get them down the line to purchase. A keynote here, and this can help with campaign building as well, predict what a user is interested in by building out segments based off of campaign tags. So when you're building out campaigns, if you tag those campaigns with like new launches or promo offers or social media posts or blog articles, you can see who's opening what emails and you can actually further filter this out. Like I mentioned in video one in the segmentation series, you can further filter this out by saying they've clicked an email that contains XYZ or that had uh, with this tag or with this campaign. So you can further filter that out more for just some additional segmentation there. Now, the next one here is going to be your 30, 60 or 90 day engaged lead. Now, this is probably going to be one of the most common, commonly used segments that you're going to use. And that's why it's in the core four here. RFV, we have high recency, low frequency and value does not exist again, because they're a lead, they're not a purchaser. Our goal here is to get them more interested and ultimately to get them to purchase. Now, the conditions that we're placing on this are people who are in the email newsletter and they've placed an order zero times overall time. The additional filters we have 
R and has been active on site for at least uh, at least once in the last 90 days or has opened an email at least once in the last 90 days or has clicked an email in the last 90 days and someone can receive email marketing. So if we go down here, you can see again, someone is in this list and then we have or or and then we have and has placed an order zero times over all time and then they can receive email marketing content to send these people very, very similar. So new products, collection launches, giveaways, holidays, promos, social proof, current events, gifting, educational content, team focused content. And what we would recommend here is start with a 60 day, start with a 60 day engaged audience. And then if you see open rates above 20%, you can expand beyond this, right? So you can expand to 90 days or even 120 days if you want, if people are really engaged. Again, here, predict what users are actually interested in by building out segments based off of the campaign tags. Now, the next segment we want to use here is the VIP segment. Now, this is going to be, again, one of those core segments. And this is really, really important because these are your best customers. These are people who have a high recency, a high frequency and a high value. So they're they've recently purchased, uh, they're purchasing quite frequently, and they're spending a lot of money. So our goal here is to keep them happy. So we want to give them exclusivity. We want to give them discounts, access, early access to sales like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of those types of things. Now, the conditions that we have here, again, people in the newsletter list, this is our main core list, the filter and has placed order at least X times in the last X weeks. Again, this is varying depending on how consumable your product is. Again, like a mattress will have a much, much longer life cycle than supplements. Uh, the other filter we're adding is and revenue is more than X amount. So we're trying to make this pretty exclusive. And and again, if someone can receive email marketing, right? So we go in here, you can see placed order for this client. What we did was placed order is at least three in the last 90 days. So they've, they've placed an order three times in the last 90 days, at least three times in the last 90 days. And their revenue is greater than 300 overall time. Again, they can receive email marketing. So content to send these people, dibs on new releases, special discounts, free shipping, gifts or gifts with purchase, personalization, thanks you, thank you cards, emails, videos, those types of things. It goes a long way to show how much you really value you your customers if you're sharing these types of things exclusive content exclusive access so like a private group private group a whatsapp chat or a facebook group or something like that, right? Now, the next one we're gonna look at is a 30 to 60 day brand enthusiast. So these guys are almost VIPs. So we've got high recency. I would say like frequency is mid on this one and then value is also mid. So what we're looking to do here is just increase purchase frequency. What we're trying to get them into is that VIP status. Effectively, what we're looking at here is again, people who are on the newsletter and has placed order at least X times in the last X weeks. Again, this varies depending on how consumable your product is and revenue is less than X amount. So around two to three times AOV. What we want to make sure is that this is not the same as the VIP flow. This should be slightly less than the VIP flow. Since the VIP flow, we selected $300 was spent overall time. We said is less than $300. And in the VIP flow, we said is greater than $300. But we also want to put a restriction in there too of like, hey, you know what? We want to make sure we we're getting people who are really spending a fair amount, right? They're not quite at VIP status, but they're spending more than our average customer. So we said, and is greater than $100. Again, same filter here. So content to, that, to send to these people, cross sells, upsells, free shipping, new product, collection launches, giveaways, holidays, promos, social proof, current events, gifting, educational content, and team focused content. Now, brand enthusiasts are relatively similar here. These are just people who like this one is just they're engaged a little bit more frequently. So we're calling it a 30, 60 day brand enthusiast. Their recency is a little bit higher. And with this one, their recency is actually a little bit lower. So we could, we could actually call this mid frequency or mid mid recency. And then I call it mid to high. Now, our goal here again is to just increase their AOV, get them into the VIP segment. Again, same conditions here, nothing special here. The only thing that we're removing is we're just changing this date from 60 days to 90 days. Same kind, same kind of uh, content to send to these people. I won't riff that riff through that one because it's it's the exact same as the previous one. Now, our 90-day engaged purchasers, right? Our recency is relatively high, frequency is lower, value is kind of like mid, I'd say like low to mid value. And our goal here is to just increase increase their purchase frequency. So what we want to do here is only target people who are on the newsletter, same as same as before, and they placed an order at least once over all time and has been active on the site at least once in the last 90 days or has opened an email 
at least once in the last 90 days. So what we're trying to do here is look at people who have engaged with us in the last 90 days, but haven't purchased again. So again, this is what it looks like built out in Klaviyo. We've got opened email at least once in the last 90 days, clicked email at least once in the last 90 days, or has been active on site in the last 90 days, and has also placed an order at least once overall time. The other piece here is just if someone can or cannot receive marketing. Now, similar, again, very similar types of content here that we're gonna send these people. Again, they're purchasers. We're trying to get them to purchase more. So it's pretty much the same type of content we wanna be sending to those people. Every brand is gonna be slightly different here. So this is where you can get really creative with the cross sell flows that you have, with the giveaways that you have, with the access that you have. And you can look more specifically into like what people have purchased, what they might be interested in purchasing, and then in building out those flows specific to them. Moving on here, all past purchasers. It's gonna be like lower recency, low to mid uh, recency, low frequency, and then value is also kind of like low to mid. Goal here is to increase purchase frequency again. The conditions that we place, again, someone is in the newsletter, they've placed an order at least once overall time, and they've refunded zero times overall time, and they've canceled their order zero times overall time as well. Now, key thing we wanna look at here, and the reason that we're doing this is because we don't want people to get into this segment if they placed an order and then refunded it three days later. Again, we have placed order at least once overall time, refunded zero times, canceled order zero times as well. And then again, same filter here, can receive email marketing. Similar types of content to these people as well. Again, purchases. Waiting for wow. So waiting for wow is going to be low recency, low frequency and mid value. Our goal here is to get them back to purchase. So these are people who haven't purchased in the last 120 days. The condition here is that again, the same thing, only people who are not or who are on the newsletter filter is and has placed at least one order between this is key between 120 and 365 days and someone has placed an order zero times in the last 120 days. So we're specifically targeting people who have placed an order 120 to 365 days ago. And we don't want the people who have purchased again recently. This is often like we'll build this out in a win back flow as well. So win back again, we're trying to win these people back because they purchased a while ago, but they just haven't placed an order recently. We got a cross sell segment here as well. Now the cross sell segment is going to be a high recency. Frequency is low and value is low. So our goal here is to improve the their average order value and get them to purchase additional items that are typically going to be complementary to their current product, or it can just be something that they might be interested in as well since they bought the initial product. Again, people who are on the newsletter condition ordered at least one product where variant name equals X product name. And the filter we're going to have on here is has ordered product zero times over all time where variant equals Y product name. So a customer has purchased a hairdryer, but not the accessories. So an example of this would be below, right? So we'd say, okay, they've ordered a product at least once overall time where the collection contains our soups. What we're also saying is they've made a purchase or they've ordered a product zero times over all time where the collection equals brain fuel bundle, right? So what we're going to do here is say, okay, they've purchased some of our soups. Maybe they're interested in the brain fuel bundle. Maybe maybe we can upsell them on that. Maybe we can get them to purchase that because they haven't purchased that before. Next piece here is the win back. This is very similar, very similar to the previous flow up here, waiting for a while. Now the win back is low recency, mid to high frequency, and then higher value. So our goal is to win them back. And these are people, again, who have placed an order zero or X times. Typically, we're going to do like a maybe two times or three times. Sometimes it's just once, depending on the customer uh, and the client, between 120 and 365 days ago. The filter that we're putting on that is has placed orders zero times in the last 120 days. And then also they can receive email marketing. So this is kind of how this looks like built out here. Key notes here, monitor open rates closely because these people haven't really, they haven't really engaged a whole lot. They haven't purchased a whole lot in the last little bit. What we wanna keep an eye on is making sure that our open rates are still decent. Like we're not getting hammered too hard on open rates. Our unsubscribe rates are under 3% and our spam complaint rates are under 0.08%. Couple more here for you. The sunset unengaged. This is really, really crucial and one that is very, very often overlooked. Um, this is low frequency, low value, and low recency. Our goal here is just to clean the account ultimately and remove people from the list. Now there's a whole nother list cleaning section 
go check that out. There's a whole nother video on specifically list cleaning. Really, really important that you keep an eye on this, but effectively what we're doing here in this segment, and this flow takes a little bit more to build out because it's the, it's the sunset flow, right? So what we're trying to do here is we're looking at people who have received at least 10 emails over all time, or you can like the other filter you can use is or subscribe to the main list for 90 or 180 days. Both will have a similar effect here and has opened an email zero times in the last 90 to 180 days and has clicked an email zero times in the last 90 to 180 days. Now, this piece is very important. If you don't include this, you're going to get people who just opted into the welcome series and then they're going to be added into this series. Last thing you want to do <laughs> right now, there's a little asterisk beside the 10 here because what we want to do is we want to look at on average, how many emails are you sending per month and realistically, how many should people receive before deeming them unengaged? So what we'd say with this client was they've received received at least 20 emails, they've got a pretty high frequency of sending emails. So at least 20 emails, it might be 14 for you, it might be 13 for you. Again, watch the list cleaning section for a little bit more specifics on how you can dive into this number and arrive at this number opened zero times in the last 180 days clicked zero times in the last 180 days. Again, you could be more aggressive here. What you want to do is just kind of like start look at what size this would be look at how many people this would be. But realistically, if they haven't opened in 180 days, or if they haven't opened in 90 days, even and you're sending a lot of emails out, we don't want to be emailing them. It's just going to be doing more harm than good. Finally here, we're going to look at the customer lifetime value. So this is using predictive analytics, which is really, really cool. It's basically taking into account both past and predictive future amounts that a customer will purchase from your brand over time. So these segments allow you to group up users based off of this value, and then you can effectively just segment a little bit more and then trigger segment based flows off of this as well. So an example of this is you have a $100 AOV and you want to target customers who are unlikely to hit that AOV with an upsell, cross sell or some kind of discount to push them above that level. The condition here again would be they're on the main list. So this is the welcome series list or this would be like the newsletter list and has opened an email in the last 90 days. Uh, you could use 30, 60 or 90 days and then predicted customer lifetime value is at most 100. So if someone, and then the other piece here is if someone can receive email marketing, right? So again, this is kind of what it looks like here, uh, at least once in the last 90 days, and then predictive analytics about someone, predicted customer lifetime value is at most $100. So this is where you're gonna want to send them an upsell, send them a cross sell, give them a discount to purchase more. If you wanna learn more about this, basically the customer lifetime value or predictive analytics, check out that video. There's a whole video on that as well. Again, this could be a four hour long video. <laughs> Second to last piece here is just gender. So predictive analytics, about someone predicted gender is likely female or likely male and if someone can receive email marketing so again this is predictive analytics and what we're going to want to do here is just send a little bit more specific content to whatever specific gender we believe these people are going to be again a different way to do this is through a multi-step pop-up form or a multi-step opt-in form where you're collecting this data initially and that could be really really helpful as well because there's nothing worse than being a guy and getting ads for like dresses and things like that i mean <laughs> There, there are worse things, but also like you probably don't want that as a brand. That's another thing to keep in mind here. And finally, if you're bearing with me here, the last one you can use is geography. So this is just properties about someone. This would effectively just be country equals whatever state or region. And then again, can receive email marketing. Country equals Canada, uh, country equals the US, whatever it is. Another great way to kind of further segment and refine people, especially helpful if you have a brick and mortar. I'm just gonna scroll up to the top and just review those key segments again. So like I said, the core four segments you're gonna wanna use are the 90 day engaged, the VIPs, the win back and the sunset segment. Now, this this is really, really important. Don't get overwhelmed with this. Start with those four and then start building out the other ones based off of what's required for you. You can always ping me, ask me which ones you think would be best in a certain scenario. But again, this is the last video of the segmentation series. I hope you got a lot out of this. This is really, really, really important. Watch all three videos again if you haven't already. Uh, if you've only watched this video, watch number one and number two, because it's very, very important to maintain good email health, to make sure that the right people are getting the right message at the right time, and ultimately to make sure you're crushing your email marketing. Hope you got a lot out of this and I will chat to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. And if you did like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. It does really help out a lot. And if you do have a D2C brand and you'd like our help, feel free to check out the links in the description below. For brands doing over $50,000 a month, you can apply to work with our agency. And for brands doing less than $50,000 a month, you can apply for our email mastery program.